Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, hope everything's going good. It is for me, I'm excited. Last week I teased what I will be doing this week. I told you that I'd be putting a guitar effect on every layer of a recording. That's what we're going to do. This week we're recording some snippets of tracks and then I'm going to add a phaser effect to it. Some people might not know what a phaser sound effect is. For those sorts of people, I will put a little demonstration now. Adding a phaser to everything I record on a track is going to be a bit of a two-step process. It's a bit complicated as to why, but when I start recording, I'll explain that. So I've already picked out two songs that I'm going to do a bit of recording of. One of them is a song called Woke the Fuck Up by John Bellion. Sorry for the kids who might want to watch this. The second song is Fake ID by Big and Rich. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna record bits of songs, then we're gonna put the phaser effect on everything and see what it does. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a crazy one. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so this is why this is gonna work in sort of two steps. I'll show you right now. Here we have like a software version of a mixing desk. And uh, you can see via the piano icons here, these are like the two piano tracks. There's two because I do one recording and then pan it into the left speaker and right speaker to make it sound bigger. So there's two of those, they're represented by pink. So the step one is to put phaser on all the things that are recorded like that. So I'll put phaser on piano and vocals for this one because that's all that's on it. But then you'll notice there's these other tracks to the right here. That's going to be step two, because these tracks are for like reverb and ambience. So those ambience and reverb sounds that you sort of get that are supposed to emulate it being in a realistic room, those little tiny things will also have phaser on. Um, I don't expect everyone who's watching to understand that, because you might not all be into music production, but those are the two steps I'm going to do. First, phaser on all the instruments and recordings. Then, phaser on absolutely everything, including other effects, are going to be phasered. I hope you understand what I'm phasering, and I hope I've not said phaser too many times either. Let's um, keep going. I'll uh, see you next when it's all done. Last night I woke the fuck up Realized I need you here As desperate as that sounds, yeah, yeah Last night I woke the fuck up Realized I need you here As desperate as that sounds, yeah, yeah Last night I woke the fuck up Realized I need you here As desperate as that sounds, yeah, yeah Last night I woke the fuck up Realized I need you here As desperate as that sounds, yeah, yeah Last night I woke the fuck up Realized I need you 
The main thing I'm noticing through these songs is how much I love phasers. It sounds great. I like listening to the piano with a phaser on. I think just that sounds really cool. And even when it's a vocal and piano, just those two, and phaser on just those recordings, none of the effects, just phaser on the recordings, it sounds cool. I could use that for like a breakdown in a song or something. That sounds great. I noticed when I put the phaser on absolutely everything, so everything I recorded and the effects, it, it made the dynamics kind of not impactful. I think it took a lot of bass out somehow, and it just wasn't quite punchy. It felt weaker for some reason. Don't know why that was. Um, let's listen to track number two. Hey, I really like that song, I think it's really cool. If you've not listened to it before, go check out Big and Rich. They're just great, their whole first album is awesome. The phaser on just the recordings is kind of similar to the first song. It adds a phaser thing and it did thin it out a bit, but I feel like the more phaser there is in general, the worse it ends up sounding. You've got to use phasers subtly, in that because this track has more recordings, it messes it up a lot more. And then when I put phaser on everything for this track, it just overwhelmed it. You couldn't really even hear what it was saying. Interesting, I guess, but I feel like if you add phaser to a small amount of instruments, it can sound cool, but when you go overboard with it, 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 it goes downhill pretty quickly. That's what we've learned, I guess. That's it for this week's episode of How Would That Sound? I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll join me next time where I'll be using this ham. I won't. I'm lying. I think I'm going to do a similar video to this, but with a different effect. If that's interesting to you, join me next time. I'll see you there. Goodbye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs>